Hi, I'm Andrea Robinson, Director of Sustainability at the Democratic National Convention Committee. We're here at the University of Colorado at Boulder at the National Snow and Ice Data Center. We're going to talk to some climate scientists and find out what's happening at the polls in relation to climate change. are very important in the fact that they help keep our planet a lot cooler than it would be without them. Um, sea ice, for example, covers most of the Arctic during both winter and summer, and during the summer season when the sunlight's hitting the ocean surface, it's actually hitting the sea ice that's covering the ocean surface. And because sea ice is very bright, it reflects most of that incoming solar radiation back out to space. So if you start losing all of that, you're going to start warming the planet, and you get in this sort of positive feedback loop, so that if you lose the snow and ice, you then warm the planet so you start melting more snow and ice and it's just this vicious positive feedback loop that you get stuck in. And so what happened in 2007, I mean this pink line right here is where we normally expect the ice to be during September. That's where it normally is. This is where it ended up this past September. It's nearly, well compared to this pink line it's a 40% reduction in the amount of area of the ocean that was covered by sea ice. And if you look sort of more over time, and this is just the variability in the amount of area of the Arctic Ocean covered by sea ice during September. So you look at what happened in 2007 and you had a 27% drop. And what we're concerned about a little bit with this last year is that we already saw this kind of a drop happen this year. But, you know, it's just happening 20 years earlier than the climate models are telling us. Then the, the bottom line is I think we're going to continue to lose all this ice. Whether it happens by 2012, as some colleagues are saying, or 2030, the reality is it's going to happen and the impacts are going to be the same. If you were to melt all of Greenland, that would raise global sea level by about, I guess about 27 feet or so. I mean, that's, that's quite a bit. So, um, and when you start thinking about the fact that 80% of the world's population lives within 30 miles of the coast, you know, that's going to have a big impact. I think we could power this entire country with alternative energy, and I think we can also power our vehicles with alternative energy. So I think, you know, we have to be moving in that direction. We have to reduce our carbon footprint, without a doubt. 